after uh, you think we're sitting in the Tri Club, a, a rugby establishment. How long have we known each other? 35 years? Minimum 35 years. It's a long time. That is incredible. I know, and, and the statute of limitations has run out on the things that we've done together. Well, think about Glendale back then. I mean, in the 70s and the 80s, you were a disc jockey down on the Strand. Absolutely. I mean, right down here, I was a place called the Urban Cowboy. But my first job I ever had as a, as a jock was when disco was in, and I worked for a guy named George Zaracos in a place called, um, uh, when it was done, it was right where the athletic club is now, uh, Mr. Lucky's. Oh, the man. king of clubs. The Upstairs was yeah. uh, disco, downstairs was, was, was country music, and when the bar let out, it was a guaranteed fight. And I met a lot of guys who were part-time pro wrestlers, it's the truth, who were working as doormen. And uh, <laughs> that's one of the ways I got into pro wrestling business. What they call the guys who always took the hit? Oh, the, first, the, 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 the um, what they call them? The Mark. Yeah, the, well, the Mark was a guy who went to pro wrestling, thought it was real. <laughs> um, that's a Mark. Well, now they're voters. Well, <laughs> the entire nation. True story. I'm in an automobile with legendary pro wrestling manager Bobby the Brain Heenan. And uh, the Brain and I are coming back. We're going actually from Cheyenne to Denver. I was working for Vern Gagne. And we're riding a car with a bunch of other guys. And the, the Brain said, you know the most frightening thing about pro wrestling fans, Peter? And I already said, kid. And I said, I don't know, Brain, what? He said, they can vote. That's a true story. And even then they knew. So, that's incredible. That's a true story. Yeah, he said they can vote. And I was waiting for him to say something else. He said, these people vote. And well, you look back uh, and you think about Glendale in the early days, 1952, when it was incorporated. It was just a little country town that decided it, did, it was going to have bars, it was going to have entertainment, it was going to be a libertarian enclave. I mean, you, you and I both saw it all back then. Well, I didn't see it in the 50s. When I, I, I hit my stride. I didn't see it in the 50s yeah, either. Yeah, yeah, I hit my stride. Late 60s, early when 70s. Working for, working for George, and then um, getting in, obviously, I had my foot in the door in radio, and then having our first couple of hit radio shows with my mentor, late Bob Lee, and we were doing country music. And then uh, hooked up with a a guy named Evo Mini, who was one of the most amazing characters I ever met. And we had our bar out on Colfax called Bob Lee, Bob Lee and Peter Boyle's Nashville West. But then we opened the Urban Cowboy across the street. I mm -hmm. said we, they, across the street from the Colorado Mine Company with Buck and Cindy Scott. And that is where I made, re met you. That's right. Was in that that's time right. period. Yeah, 1974, yeah. 75. And we had, uh, we had uh, saddles, horse saddles for bar yeah. stools. That's and right. up on the, there was the, Let's see, the Mine Company, the Urban Cowboy, uh, the um, Pat, Pat McCaffrey had O'Rourke's uh, was next door then. Uh, it was the entertainment district of Colorado. Oh, it was the Strip. Yeah. I mean, if you couldn't get lucky here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you remember, two sets of mayors of Glendale came in and they decided they were going to use that as a cause celeb to yep. sell out Glendale. Absolutely. And, uh, change Sin City. Well, it was almost as though, um, like, it was like Subic Bay in the Philippines, where they were going to elect a reform mayor, and he was going to change everything, except there wasn't anything that was really all that bad. There were places that were just, well, what did we call it? They called it the go-go 80s. Yeah. And that was the go-go 80s. There were, I mean, up and down through Glendale, everybody knew Glendale. And in essence, what they turned around and did back then is they killed Glendale. That's right. They killed Glendale. Yeah. It organically became what it, it wanted to be right. what it was. Yeah, absolutely. The, founding, the, the founders of this city wanted it to be that way. Yeah. I mean, but those guys systematically came in almost like um, the best little whorehouse in Texas when that little, little creepy little slide to the left, slide to the left right guy. Yeah. He's, he's got to clean it up. He doesn't realize there's a tax base here. There's just an amazing amount of people came into Glendale. And all these people got along with each other. Oh, there weren't any problems in Glendale. Yeah. And then we get to where uh, we come back to the resurgence of Glendale because a group of politicians, and you were right there in the middle of it, decided that it would be easy pickings Once to true. take that corner yeah. and steal it, sure. essentially. Sure. Uh, under the name of righteousness? Yes. Well, that's always been the most frightening yeah. theme of history is we're going to do this in the name of, and they point to the sky, and I duck. Start ducking. Yeah, anybody, I'm here to help you. Anybody speaks, yeah. anybody speaks for God scares me. Yeah, that's right. Those guys, so we end up on the radio. 
Yep. Having the, this Donnybrook of a fight. Yep. And how many people really thought that it would end up this way? I th uh, you did. But yeah. how, how many people? Because you're on the inside of that, the sure. purient part of it is an easy sell. Well, what people don't realize now, and it's interesting as we make this film or have to make this, this documentary, there's a movement in Colorado to break away from Colorado, to form another state called the state of northern Colorado. Weld County. People have had it. And one of the things I think, and I've spoken for Mike and for the original Tea Party many, many times, we hear the terms tea party today in this country, and it means different things to different people. This was the first tea party. I mean, these guys said, we're going to talk about the Constitution. It was it was Mike. It was an attorney named Chuck Bonnewell. It was a handful of guys. Debbie Matthews. Debbie Matthews, of course. And they said, no, 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 the world doesn't work that way. And it, it started um, a prairie fire. And that prairie fire is today, I think, a forest fire. The people have said, no, these guys, these, these guys were right. Um, and boy, people got blamed for stuff, and people got jacketed, and people got named. But through it all, the truth will, the truth will out. The newspaper started here, the Chronicle started here. I mean, right. guys, they did it right. And of course, if you look out here now, and this place is amazing, this would have never happened under those guys. Never. No, they were busy selling out the tax base yeah. to try to actually get Section 8 housing mm -hmm. and federal money oh, to yeah. come in here rather than creating an opportunity Absolutely. for the citizens. I remember, or well, we can't name names, but I remember people that were buying houses and putting illegals into the houses and using them to work in their restaurants. Their restaurants were in Denver, but they were housing them in Glendale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Or what we said, a sack of rice a week. Right. I know they did that. That's right. And that was done... Believe me when I tell you, it was done. Right. And it wasn't done just by one guy. It was right. done by more than one. And Glendale was a place where they could, I hate to, I don't want to say it any other way, but they, they could be their garbage dump. Right. And think of how much that's changed. Oh. I mean, Glendale today is a model. I mean, guys are looking at Glendale and going, wait a minute, I think they did something right here. As I say, you look at this place and you look at just the way that everything's lining up here. There's a big Target store here, all these kinds of things. PetSmart, I go there for my cat. I mean, that's happened. And if you see the remnants of the old regimes, they're, they're just in shambles. Right. Well, they can't afford to exist. Yeah. They can't, they literally don't have the tax base to exist. What did people say? You have such an interesting perspective on this. What did people <coughs> say? when that cheap shot was taken. I think they felt that Shotgun Willie's was going to go down, it was going to be the end of, end of the story of the Glendale of old and no resurgence. Well, I always thought it was going to be, um, who was the woman who went around in, uh, with, a, with a hatchet and broke up the bars? Um, uh, It'll come to me for a second. Carrie Nation. Carrie Nation. And uh, I think that's how they saw themselves, as they were going to suddenly run into what we euphemistically call the gun or the, the like Glendale that. Ballet or yeah. the Glendale Ballet or World Headquarters. <laughs> and I thought, right. and I, don't, I, I don't think they understood men. I don't think they understood, I mean, I think today there's a, there's a fight in this country that men are being marginalized regardless of ethnicity or skin color. It has nothing to do with anything. But men are not allowed to be men. We're not allowing boys to be men. And subsequently, I think that tip of the spear we first saw when they were going, well, we just simply can't have this. What are you talking about? You know, right, you've been right. outside of, have you been anywhere? I mean, the world exists in a different way than, I think, than some of those folks thought that uh, this place should exist. Well, the world exists in a way that was actually patterned to exist. I mean, yeah. we, we keep forcing this square peg in the round hole, Absolutely. and it doesn't go. It doesn't.